walks, overlapping action. So overlapping action is very important in walks. In fact, we uh, recognize a walk even when we just see a few key points in the motion uh, from the timing of overlapping action. You see this in this um, psychology experiment. You recognize a walk just from uh, seeing the uh, motion of uh, not just the legs, but the hips, the shoulders, the uh, arms, even the uh, up and down motion of the, of the head. If you um, pause it, it uh, doesn't really look recognizably as a person walking. It just looks like a constellation of points. Now, one of the overlapping actions that occurs in a walk is the rotation of the shoulders. Um, we saw in another tutorial that uh, pelvic rotation uh, makes uh, walking uh, more energy efficient. And uh, when we have this pelvic rotation, we also have a corresponding uh, shoulder rotation, which is out of phase. So the right shoulder rotates forward as the opposite hip is rotating forward. Uh, here's some nice um, examples of counter-rotating motion of the uh, hips and shoulders from uh, Jessica Rabbit's uh, routine in the nightclub. Now, this um, rotation balance uh, helps you uh, move more efficiently as well in that it takes less effort, uh, less torque uh, to rotate the upper body opposite from the lower body. Essentially, you end up storing energy uh, in your spine and releasing it again uh, with each uh, step. It uh, takes more effort to uh, rotate the shoulders in phase uh, with the hips. Uh, also, it's harder to um, stay in balance in terms of uh, not uh, tipping over uh, as you're walking. Uh, now, a good way to experience this firsthand is uh, to try dancing uh, the twist. So, the twist, you uh, normally uh, swing the shoulders opposite uh, from the hips. So, uh, let's see what it looks like to dance the twist uh, the normal way, and then to do it incorrectly, moving the hips and shoulders together. So, here is um, moving the upper body opposite out of phase with the lower body. And in fact, this uh, is relatively easy to do. Uh, you basically are pushing with the upper body off on the lower body. Uh, now, if you do it, um, the twist incorrectly, moving the upper and lower body in phase, then it takes a, a lot more effort. You have to push with a lot of force with the feet, then bring the whole body to a stop, then push again, then bring the whole body to a stop, etc. Now, along with the rotation of the shoulders, the arm uh, swings uh, with the shoulders, and since it's moving uh, out of phase with the uh, hips, the arm swing is out of phase with the motion of the leg. Uh, here's a little analysis showing the tracking of the hand and uh, the ankle. And um, as you see, the uh, there's a definite um, similar pattern of the motion of the hand and the motion of the ankle, but uh, one is uh, the mirror image of the other. And in fact, these patterns sort of resemble this uh, half uh, teardrop uh, shape. So uh, the ankle stays here for a while as the body goes over the passing position and then moves um, to the uh, next uh, step. Uh, and then the hand is doing a similar uh, mirror imaged uh, pattern uh, as the, uh, as the arm is swinging out of phase with the motion of the leg. 
Uh, Richard Williams uh, points out this uh, uh, teardrop pattern for the motion of the uh, of the ankle. And I should point out this uh, teardrop pattern occurs whether the camera is moving uh, with uh, the character as uh, cycles are usually uh, presented or if the um, character is moving past a stationary camera. The pattern is the same. The, uh, it may be stretched or compressed, but you still have the same uh, teardrop pattern. Now, another uh, overlapping action is uh, the uh, swinging of uh, character effects, such as the swinging of a ponytail or possibly uh, clothing, so forth. Uh, so with these uh, passive overlapping actions, a lot of the time we have something which is swinging like a flexible pendulum. Uh, a flexible pendulum is very similar to a rigid pendulum. The timing of a swinging chain or rope is uh, very similar to um, a rigid pendulum. Uh, here is a, a compound pendulum, which is a um, pendulum that has a hinge in the center. So it's a uh, pendulum and pendulum attached to a pendulum. And notice the uh, drag uh, that we have, which is rather similar to that of a uh, flexible pendulum, like a swinging rope, say. Uh, now, we can understand the appearance of drag in the compound pendulum in that uh, if we have a short pendulum, it swings quickly. If we have a long pendulum, it swings uh, more slowly. So with a compound pendulum, the upper half uh, has a natural frequency with it swings faster than the lower half. And so because of this, uh, we have this effect that we call drag. Now, you might think that the swinging motion, uh, which is uh, occurring, say, for a ponytail, is due to the character uh, swinging their head side to side, but really it's due to the up and down motion of the body. So you see the character is not moving her head side to side. The head is basically just moving up and down with the rest of the body. So it's that up and down motion which actually induces the swinging motion of the pendulum, and this is called parametric resonance. Uh, if we do an analysis, we find that this parametric reson resonance occurs at a frequency of swinging for the pendulum that is half the running frequency. So if the runner takes three steps per second, then the, uh, say the ponytail, will do one and a half swings per second. It's maybe easier to see in this uh, picture where the runner is um, in the down position and the ponytail's on the left, then the runner is in the up position, ponytail's in the center, and then when the runner is in the down position again, so she's done one full step, uh, the ponytail is on the opposite side, on the right. So. Uh, one full up and down cycle of the body, which is one step, uh, the ponytail does half a cycle going left to right. On the uh, following step, the uh, ponytail goes back and swings uh, right and then back to left. So um, now the uh, parametric resonance uh, is um, enhanced if the natural swinging frequency of the pendulum matches uh, the resonance frequency. So uh, it turns out that for ponytails of about 14 inches, uh, that this is the running frequency that you would um, need to uh, get that swing. So much longer uh, ponytails would not uh, swing as much. Uh, so 14 inches is like the optimal um, length for parametric resonance at this running frequency. So in uh, summary, uh, shoulders rotate out of phase with the pelvic rotation and this uh, keeps uh, rotation balance, as you saw in Dancing the Twist. Uh, the arms swing uh, with the shoulders rotation, so they uh, are moving opposite the legs since the shoulders are moving opposite uh, rotation from the hips. 
Uh, the motion of the hand and the ankle trace out a half teardrop uh, cycle uh, during a walk. And the body's up and down motion can induce a swing by parametric resonance. We saw that in the ponytail, but it's common in all sorts of character effects, especially uh, clothing. And in parametric resonance, the frequency of the swinging is half of the up-down frequency. Basically, uh, the for each uh, step, the uh, pendulum in parametric resonance does half of a swing per step. And since there's uh, two steps per walk cycle or per run cycle, it'll do uh, one full swing um, to one side and then back to the other once the character has taken two steps to complete uh, one walk cycle or one run cycle.